Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Redden and this week my cookbook is officially available in bookstores all around the world, everywhere except for Europe where it comes out next month. So today I'm making the hazelnut chocolate dessert slice from my book and I'll show you three other dessert options that you can make using elements from just this one recipe. So firstly to make the easy chocolate chantilly cream, heat your cream and then pour it over your chocolate. The heat from the cream will just take a couple of minutes to melt that chocolate and then you can use your whisk to mix them together and then you put that in the fridge to chill. Easy right? Next for the crispy base, put the chocolates into a bowl and melt it in the microwave for one minute and then stir. It is important that you stir this so you don't get hot spots and the chocolate doesn't burn. Then microwave that for another 30 seconds and stir again. That looks good. Add in the Nutella and the rice bubbles or rice krispies depending where you're from same product different name now if you're a beginner baker you can stop right there if you want you can add more rice bubbles in if you want to and then just scoop the mixture into cupcake liners add some sprinkles on top and let them set for an easy sweet treat but for those of us who are making the whole dessert tip the mixture onto baking paper add another sheet of baking paper on top and roll it out to the size of your container I'm making a container half the size of what the recipe in the book will give you and that's so I can use the other half of the recipe to show you alternatives with each element. Just pop that into the freezer once you've got it to the right size. Moving on to the decor. Sift together the hazelnut meal and icing sugar using a coarse sieve. Now this is just to aerate it and get rid of any lumps so if you're left with little bits of hazelnut meal at the end just chuck them in too. Slice up the nuts that are going to go on top. Now this is supposed to be hazelnuts, but for some reason in the shops at the moment I couldn't get hazelnuts. I've got a handful of them in the cupboard and I'm going to save them for the top of the dessert and use almonds here instead. Whisk together the egg whites and the sugar with a pinch of cream of tartar. The cream of tartar or tartaric acid just helps to stabilise the foam of the egg whites. Once the egg whites form stiff peaks like this, Add all the hazelnut meal and icing sugar in together and fold those together. Just scoop down to the bottom of the bowl and over the top. Now you want to keep as much air in this mixture as possible. So you don't want to overmix it, but you also don't want streaks of egg white. So keep going until it looks even like this. Pour that into a lined baking tray and then spread it out to make it flat on top. Now this tends to stay exactly where you've put it. It doesn't flatten out as it bakes, so spend a little bit of time sort of evening that out. Then sprinkle it on top with the chopped nuts. Then of course you just bake that. Now let me pause there to give you a different dessert option with this. You can make the decor just on its own, it's very yummy. And then just pipe it in spirals to make circle shapes. Now if you draw a circle on the underneath of your baking paper, you'll have a bit of a guide so you can get them the same size. For those of you who have already got your cookbook, please do remember to go and leave a review on the store's website where you bought it. Apparently it's really important for books to have reviews from readers, so if you could do that, that would be a great help to me. Obviously once you've piped those you want to bake those in the oven as well. Once they're baked you can stack up the decor layers with layers of whipped chantilly cream or you could use plain whipped cream, you could add fresh fruit or just sprinkle the top with nuts. Moving on to our cremo, whisk together the sugar and the egg yolks and then realise that you probably need a bigger bowl for this task. Heat the cream until it just starts to boil and then pour a little of the hot cream into your now slightly bigger bowl with egg yolks and sugar in it and whisk it quickly. Then you want to pour that back into the hot cream and mix it through. You do it this way, a little bit of the hot cream into the eggs first so that you don't get cooked chunks of egg yolk in your dessert. It just makes it much easier to mix it in evenly. Return that to the heat. Now this really doesn't take long. We're just making sure the egg yolks are cooked through, but if you overheat this, it will curdle. I like to stir it and tip the pan, and as soon as you see it starting to stick to the base here, which will literally be sort of in a minute and a half, it's done. Take it off straight away and pour it through a sieve onto the chocolate. Wait a couple of minutes for the warmth to melt that chocolate and then use a whisk to mix that all together until it's all the one chocolatey colour. Here's your third dessert option. You can make 
just this cremo on its own and serve it in glasses it is super rich so you don't need much you could top this with fruit or whatever you like for our chocolate hazelnut dessert, reserve a cup of the cremeau for later, we'll need that in a minute, and pour the rest into a container lined with plastic wrap on the base and the sides. Spread it out and give it a little shake to flatten it, then flip the decoir over and add it nut side down into the cremeau. Then take the cup of cremeau that we set aside and spread that out over the top. It's a really thin layer, it's just to make the base stick. Grab the base out of the freezer, trim it to size, remove the baking paper obviously from one side and put that on top and then go ahead and remove the baking paper from the other side too. Now you want to put that whole thing in the freezer for at least four hours. Mark a piece of foil out with the dimensions given in the recipe and spread out some tempered chocolate over the top. Now if you have acetate you can use that here instead of the foil and it will give you a much nicer shine to the chocolate. Once it's firm but not yet crisp, cut out your rectangles using the lines that you measured before so that you get them nice and straight and all the same size. For the decoration on top, put some more of your chocolate onto some acetate and use a pastry comb to spread it out and then you can make those curved by just rolling the acetate and putting the ends in a cup or something round. Now, if you don't have a pastry comb, don't worry. Just grab a fork and wrap some sticky tape around it like that. And then run the fork through the chocolate. It's not quite as good as using a pastry comb, but it's still going to work perfectly fine once you separate these out. It's assembly time. Take the dessert out of the freezer, tip it out, and remove the plastic wrap. Trim the very edges off to neaten them up and you end up with some yummy little scraps there. <laughs> then place some of the chocolate rectangles on top and use them as your cutting guide so that you get the dessert the exact same size as your chocolate rectangles. Once it's cut, take the chocolate off again. We'll need that in a minute. Grab the chocolate chantilly cream out of the fridge and whip it until it's thick. Then pipe six dots of chantilly cream onto each dessert. Now add your rectangle of chocolate back on top of those. Add the decorations on top of each one in the middle and let them defrost in the fridge before serving to your guests. Or if you're in lockdown like we were when I made this, why not pop some in a container on your neighbour's doorstep to add some sunshine to their day. There it is, four different dessert options from the one recipe page of my book. With thanks to my patrons for your amazing support, thanks to everyone who's bought my cookbook, make it a great week by being kind to others, and I'll see you on Friday.